This video is brought to you by fishhuntshoot.com. For more and bigger trout, go to fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. It's Friday and time for the video we call This Week in Fishing, where we present fishing reports and fishing news from the week that was and talk about future fishing opportunities. This week I hit French Meadows Reservoir and got in on some solid summer trout action. I brought a total of five rainbows to the kayak, including my personal best ever French Meadows rainbow before being chased off the lake by strong winds fairly early in the morning. Check out the exceptional fight my biggest rainbow put up, and then I'll share a few comments about the wind that has been challenging Northern California anglers this summer. I'll finish up with some predictions about trout fishing over the next few weeks, as well as some hot bite reports. Fish on. Man, that fish hit hard. He's all over the surface. That's on a mini turbo and a piece of a night crawler. Man. That fish is going crazy back there. Man, that's a good fish. <laughs> I guess. Wow. Wow. It was all over the surface. If he's as big as he fights, this is a really good fish. Mini turbo one worm. Pretty simple. I'm finessing him this morning. The bite has been tough here at French Meadows, but uh, been on the water for 15 minutes and uh, I am hooked up. Beautiful rainbow. Wow. That's a really nice rainbow for French Meadows, let me tell you. Wow. Look at that dandy rainbow. What a fish. What an awesome rainbow. I'm going to get him back in the water. Look at that square tail. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> that was worth getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. A little speed here. A little, oh, he wants to go. And there he goes. Down he goes. Woo! Simple rig. Got a one of my uh, mini turbo worm uh, worm rigs. I've slid the bobber stop up about 12 inches above the hook. Got a slow death hook right there. And. Uh, just rolling that worm very subtle that blade putting out just a little bit of flash a little bit of vibration um, and the worm's putting out some vibration too because it's rolling on that slow death hook I think I'm gonna be able to reuse this uh, reuse this worm just like that just like that very simple very effective um, you know, it's late July here in the high Sierras. These fish have seen everything. They're not really on a hardware bite. You really have to finesse them. And uh, that is a great rig for that kind of work. It puts out just enough of a, of a calling card to bring them in and close the deal. Well, I'm pulling my lines. Wind, wind, and more wind. That's what we've had this summer in Northern California. It is hands down the windiest summer I can ever remember here in the North State. And obviously, it's got something to do with the, uh, with the dry conditions we've been having. It's just kind of, a, kind of a, a quirk of the weather pattern. I've had a great morning. I got five, I'm up here at French Meadows. I got five rainbows to the kayak, including my, my personal best French Meadows rainbow. But uh, this wind wasn't supposed to kick in until about 11. It's barely 10 o'clock now, and it's been blowing for an hour and it's intensifying and it was supposed to blow pretty good today so I'm gonna cut my losses and head for the ramp you know as anglers we got to play the cards we were dealt unfortunately this summer we've been dealt a lot of windy hands so we'll see what the future has in store I'm hoping to see some early rain this fall who knows but uh, I'll just be happy if these if these relentless winds lay down and allow us to get in a good day of fishing 
I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm out of here for now. I'm running for the ramp. I got to reel in my lead core, but uh, that's what's on my mind. Wind, 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 and white caps and more wind. Anyway, I'll catch you later. Now that rainbow wasn't huge by, you know, Lake Davis or Eagle Lake standards, but uh, that was a very nice fish, you know, for French meadows. And uh, man, he put up a fight. I thought he was, you know, bigger than he was. Um, he ripped it out of the downrigger, dove, then was up on the surface. Absolute pandemonium. I was loving every second of it. Uh, before we get into some specific hot bite reports, let's kind of talk globally about trout fishing, trout fishing in the valley, in the foothills, in the high country. Um, at this time time of the year. I mean, we're going into the dog days of August. These are the summer doldrums. There is still very good fishing to be had, but you have to be aware that August, in terms of trout fishing at least, is a fairly slow action month. And, and that occurs for, you know, several different reasons. One, the surface temperature's up, and that means typically the trout are down in, in fairly deep water where they're not available to a lot of anglers. They're not really available to the shore guys and to the guys that, you know, don't have lead core downriggers on their boat, stuff like that. Um, food is also plentiful at this time of the year. And whenever food is plentiful, it's always harder to catch the trout. The trout have been locked into a, a certain lifestyle for many weeks now. They've got all the food they want and they've seen a lot of offerings. They're highly conditioned, meaning they've, they've seen just about everything, you know, that anglers like to pull. You know, they've seen cast masters and threaded worms and in some cases flies, rapalas, all that stuff and more. And uh, all that just adds up to challenging conditions and challenging, you know, it's challenging to get bites out there sometimes. Combine that with the winds that we've had and uh, it could be tough, but if you wanna catch fish, you're not gonna catch them from the couch, you gotta get out there. Part of the fun of fishing is dealing with challenging conditions and August, it is ripe with challenging conditions. Now, what we have to look forward to is the month of September, October, and into November. Things start to change. The days are gonna shorten significantly. Those surface temperatures are gonna come down. The fish are gonna break out of their routine, whether they're planters, holdovers, or wild fish. Instinctively, they know winter is coming and that makes them put on the feed bag. It makes them break out of their little routine. They're not down at 60 feet any, anymore. At some point, they're gonna be up near the surface. It's gonna be a whole new game. They're gonna be receptive to chasing a variety of different baits, and uh, those, are, those are really the, the blue ribbon days for us trout anglers. I love spring fishing. Spring fishing's a lot of fun, but uh, I think you'll look far and wide to find action as intense in terms of trout fishing as the action you find in the fall. Um, and it's just the opposite. I always say, tell guys, you know, in the springtime, you know, work the valley, then work the foothills, and follow that bite up the Sierras. Well, just the opposite is going to happen. The action is going to start out in the high country then it's gonna to move to the foothills, then it's gonna to move to the valley at places like Comanche and Folsom and stuff like that. So we've got some very good days ahead. Um, we've gotta get through August, you know, get in your licks while you can, while it's hot and smoky and all that kind of stuff, but be looking, looking ahead, figure out your gear, figure out your destinations, figure out where you're gonna go fish because we are gonna have some outstanding action this fall. Lake levels are gonna be down, Obviously, it's a dry year, and that means concentrated fish. Launching a boat might be challenging, but concentrated fish, hungry fish, um, I can't wait to get after them. So let's look at some bites that are happening right now around the state. Um, and, and speaking of you know high mountain trout, stuff like that, let's start out with Eagle Lake. It's a haul for most of us, um, and it's typically not the time of the year when you think of going to Eagle Lake. Not a lot of guys are, are thinking to themselves, man, I'm going to Eagle Lake this year and I'm gonna fish in August. But the fact of the matter is, when the fish at Eagle Lake are, are driven down in the water column, by warm surface temperatures, they will lock into a pretty tight zone. There'll be chubs below the trout, warm water above the trout, and uh, trollers can do very well. My buddy Larry Nelson, he was just up at the lake. He may still be there. I don't know, Larry's retired, he fishes a lot, but uh, he just got his personal best rainbow up there. He got a five pound Eagle Lake rainbow, and from what I hear, fire tiger lures are the bomb right now. Um, little Cleos, needlefish, stuff like that, 
find a fish, get a fire tiger lure in the zone, and you are gonna hook up. Now, the best action at Eagle Lake is gonna take place in October and November, but if you're looking to get away, you wanna get after some super hard fighting trout, some great eating trout, Eagle Lake is a, a very good destination at this time. Um, boat launching is still pretty easy there. Um, the lake level is dropping, but uh, launching that boat is doable. So be careful, be patient, get out on the water and get after those epic Eagle Lake rainbows. Um, west of there at Lake Shasta, that's probably the best all around trout bite in the state right now. My buddy Robert Hauer, he's up there. They're popping fish anywhere from about 45 to about 75 feet deep. Small shad pattern spoons, shad pattern soft plastics, minnow tubes, small flies. Um, Trigger Spoon Juniors, stuff like that, Castmasters, Needlefish. If it imitates a shad, find the fish, drop into that zone, and you should be hooking up. It's an early bite, early is best, before the wakeboarders get out there, um, but you should be able to hit the water and have a limit of fish in the box by about nine o'clock. Um, there's still a few browns showing up in the mix, a few kings are in the mix, and I just saw a picture of an 18 inch kokanee. So the kokanee, you know, they've, they've really kind of prospered at Lake Shasta, which is what the biologists that you know, put them in the lake were hoping for. Um, they're there, they're big, they fight hard, they eat great kokanee action it's the first year we've had kokanee action at lake shasta in a long time it's not a super intense bite but if kokanee are your passion get out there you know shasta's a big lake even when it's down it's a big lake so get out there accept the challenge of finding those fish i'm um, figuring out what it is that kind of rings the dinner bell for them and uh, i think you're going to have a great time um the last bite I really want to talk about has nothing to do with trout. And I, I've done this, this, this bite a few times, and my buddy Dan Bacher, he's done it a few times. I'm talking about New Hogan Reservoir Stripers. Um, it is a very unique fishery. Um, there's a big limit out there. I think the limit's 10. Don't go by me, though. You can check the regs. But I think the limit on stripers out there is 10 fish. And uh, typically how you fish for them, or at least how us trout guys fish for them, is we'll go out there and we'll roll um, rigged anchovies anywhere from the surface down to like 40 feet deep. Um, typically, we'll do that with our trout tackle. And the stripers, they range anywhere from like 14 inches up to 8 Eight pounds. Think about you know being out there with your Kel Kellogg FHS trout rod, your downrigger rod, and hooking up on an eight pound striper. You are gonna have your hands full. There's gonna be a lot of hooting and hollering. It's a very exciting bite. Now you gotta get out there early, bring plenty of cold drinks. It's gonna be hot. It's New Hogan Reservoir, but that place is teeming with stripers. It's full of thread fin shad. Get out there roll bait you know you could try some artificials too you can run white flies you can run white flukes stuff like that but the tried and true bait is a tray bait anchovy rig to roll um, if you see fish boil on the surface ease into that area don't run over the boil ease into that area troll around the area where you saw the bait fish break um, it is a thrill. I've done it several times with Monty Smith of Gold Country Sport Fishing. In fact, if you want to go on a guided trip, reach out to Monty. I don't know if he's guiding there right now, but I'll bet you if you grab him by the arm and twist with Monty's arm, you, you could get him to take you out there. He's very good at it. He likes to run side planers and banana weights and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I've done that a few times with Monty, once with uh, Monty and my dad, and uh, we had an absolute great time. Of course, Monty's a great guy and he's a great fishing instructor. So that's about all I've got right now. There's a lot of other stuff going on. Salmon in the ocean, lingcod, halibut in the bay. That's all going off. Um, just about any mountain lake is going to kick out trout if you put in your time. You could go up to Boca Reservoir and catch some pretty nice kokanee now. So there's just a lot going on. But those were the three bites that really kind of kind of piqued my interest. Eagle Lake trout, Shasta Lake trout, and king salmon, and of course new Hogan stripers. I'm Kel Kellogg. That's it for this week. I will be coming back at you on Sunday. It's Friday now. I'll be coming back at you on Sunday talking trout fishing and uh, Sunday mid-morning. I'm going to be launching a new product that you guys are going to want to see. It's pretty dang cool. Um, 
I guess I could say it's a game changer. It's a very unique, it's a very unique offering I've been playing with and uh, something you might want to have in your tackle box this fall. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks for all the support you've been giving the channel. Um, if you haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, please hit it now and you'll always know when I'm on here talking fishing. Have a great safe day and uh, I will see you soon, guys.